Massimo, thank you very much for uh, for joining me today. Um, obviously, we, this is part of our series on on customer experience and particularly leaders and their shared insights for for other people in similar roles and aspiring to work in similar roles. So. We just wanted to obviously have a conversation about your work and what you've been doing and how you've been finding some of the advances in technology over, over recent years and, and, and obviously into the future as well. Um, just as a quick introduction to people watching this, do you want to give us a, a quick intro on your role at DeLonghi? Yes, sure. So first of all, uh, thanks for this uh, interview, Adam. And I'm uh, glad to, to present my, my experience uh, with, uh, with the tool and uh, we will, we will uh, tell something about what we are doing today. Uh, I'm, uh, I joined the Longy Group in 2007 after uh, another long, so it's almost 15 years now, after another long experience in another uh, premium company, uh, always multinational company. And... Uh, it has been a journey uh, since then, since uh, when I joined. Uh, uh, it's it's really a great group, uh, a great company to work for, DeLonghi. Very nice and useful products. Uh, so, well, I think it's normal that uh, you have to love the company you work for when you stay there for 15 years and not, not planning to live in the short term. <laughs> so, Absolutely. So, and uh, when I joined the company, and uh, I think it's interesting to see how the situation evolved uh, across the years. Uh, the organization was service. The name of the department was DLS, the longest service. But with the acronym was DLS, because uh, we were supporting many other brands, all the brands of the group. We have uh, about 20 brand names. Uh, uh, some are not even existing uh, today, but some other still, uh, uh, some other are very important today, like Kenwood. Uh, like Ariete. And uh, so once upon a time, it was service. Uh, then I brought a bit of uh, the evolution uh, part uh, in our job that is from, from service to after sales. Oh, and after sales service. So something broader, something that encompasses not only the technical part of the job, but also uh, consumer support, very much consumer support. To cut the long story short, today we are customer care. To a broader scope uh, of supporting consumer all across the journey, pre-sales, uh, even during the sales phase uh, and after the sales with uh, additional services, other value, added value services, uh, even repairs, spare parts, accessories, uh, whatever you need uh, in really Connected to the to connected with consumers uh, in an engaging manner. I think this is very important. Uh, I, I can say, although maybe this is not completely true, but products are very much alike. Our competitors they also produce good products, all right. Uh, they also provide good services. Service it can be uh, your let's say. Uh, the way of, of managing better consumer loyalty, managing better the relationship, uh, gaining trust for com from consumers, and of course from from our customers, also business partners. So uh, I don't know what else to say about the story because I can keep on talking for uh, for days, maybe if you like. So it's just I just very, very quickly on the organization, Massimo. Yeah. Um, DeLonghi is still a family-owned business, isn't it? It's a public company. Public company. Um, DeLonghi is a public company. Uh, of course, the family owns uh, a good part of the shares, uh, but it is a public company. Uh, the family influence uh, is uh, uh, important, mm -hmm. but we have a CEO who is not a member of the family, Mr. Uh, Massimo Garavaglia. Massimo mm -hmm. Garavaglia comes from Barcrebo, which is uh, in, the, in the food industry, business, chocolate. So, uh, and so our organization is quite modern. Yes, the family influence is there, the family legacy still uh, uh, can appreciate that all across our organization processes and, and also sense of belonging to the company and sense of belonging to the family, to the bigger 
family, the Delonghi group. Uh, uh, so it is very important, uh, but we are a modern multinational company. Do you think that combination of being a, a modern PLC business, but with that family influence is one of the reasons why customer care is taken so seriously in the organization? Uh, well, customer care is taken so seriously because it's an important competitive uh, factor. Is a, is a, it can be a good customer care, good customer care service, is a actually a competitive, competitive advantage that you sum up with a product innovation, uh, with your uh, excellence in distribution, excellent in execution. Uh, so you need the, the right people, the right processes, the right product, or the right, uh, the right mix of everything, all right? But in the very last mile on the very last meter, you need to interact with consumer in the proper manner also in the operational uh, uh, phase. So let's say marketing, for instance, uh, uh, the marketing community uh, uses its uh, creativity to, to attract consumers. So develops uh, dreams, uh, concept, or, or even important things anyway. But I'm, what, I'm, what I want to say is that uh, uh, when it comes to the, huh, but, what if question the consumer ask in relation to maybe a marketing message, we need to provide, we must provide to consumers uh, the factual answer. You know, that is more about the relation and it's about trust. It's about building this relationship with consumers. Yeah, I think that, that takes me nicely to my, my first proper question, which is about the organization's take on data and particularly advanced technologies in the digital world so those tools that exist to facilitate a lot of what you what, what you were talking about so what what is Delonghi's take on the use of advanced technologies like artificial intelligence <laughs> it's a okay it's a big question i understand it's quite a broad question as well well, it, well it's not big uh, i will uh, turn the other way around uh, i believe the only naive companies uh, don't use data properly all right so you have to be, data are necessary. Uh, data provide the right perspective, the right insights, uh, the right understanding, uh, the true knowledge of things, all right? So if you say, well, but I think that the market is going that direction or the other direction, and this is a gut feeling, uh, please consider that your gut feeling may be very wrong. Whereas when you start performing a data analysis, a consumer insight analysis, say consumer prefer, I don't know, silver coffee machine, huh? because you got the feedback for 1.5 million consumers, huh? that is almost a factual uh, definition, isn't it? So we need data. We need to be able to process data. We use data in our organization. And the modern technologies always, uh, modern technologies enable the organization to exploit the data content in, a, in an easier manner, in something that can be understood even if you're not a data scientist. Absolutely. So we, we, we do need data, we do use data. Uh, as a, I said, we started our, our uh, digital journey long ago. And the digital journey, the, 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 the terrific uh, part of the, the, this digital journey that you discover new and exciting things every day, the worrying part of this journey is that uh, you say, wow, but there is so much. So, I mean, you need to sort out what you want to address first. And that is why you need some order, some discipline, something simple. Uh, okay. Eventually, we are discussing also about the tool. One of the reasons why we choose Wonderflow is because it enables a job, an activity, a, a, a data analysis in a simple manner, very simple. Or even the, the implementation was simple. And when it comes uh, into AI system implementation, uh, they are not simple at all, to be honest. Situation, so to perform a, uh, data mining, data analytics, uh, uh, or semantic analysis, uh, 
uh, everything. I mean, you need a lot of technical understanding about how to do those things. You need also IoT infrastructure, an environment, data lake, data organizer. Uh, so it's uh, actually, it's not simple. So getting something simple is like a miracle to us. It's beautiful. It, it really isn't. And I think for decades now, companies have used structured data, so numbers essentially to, to do data analysis on. And I guess your trailblazers for using unstructured data, so language of customer, um, and particularly the voice of customer and, and being able to do that kind of analysis. Yeah. What was the driver um, or the, the event that really made you want to dive into that information and really understand at a very granular basis what, what your customers were saying? Yeah, okay. We, we started from a very simple, uh, uh, wait, let's say, idea, we a very simple concept that we wanted to improve our web search service. So it was a basic requirement, okay? to improve uh, uh, our website service and the knowledge base, therefore to improve the knowledge base, uh, we say, well, to improve the knowledge base, the best way is to review all interaction we have uh, with uh, uh, consumers, all interaction that are uh, registered in our CRM, the, you know, the, the database of a transaction, and uh, as well as uh, from uh, rating and reviews uh, or Q and A, so when the consumer asks for something, let's see whether we can produce a knowledge based article that reply that replies that very question, right? So we started from there, and uh, also uh, thanks to let's say we experienced some some other system uh, that uh, are used uh, to correlate information. Uh, so. To explain what are the relation between different um, among different factors, uh, and uh, uh, I, I don't want to mention uh, which company or what type of process. Uh, anyway, but so yeah, we, don't, you might get us in trouble. We did it, and and <laughs> and, and, uh, and uh, we we were using we are still using partly using uh, our own BI business intelligence uh, to perform uh, certain kind of analysis. But as I said before, it it, it was time consuming. It was time consuming. So. Um, after a one and a half year experiment, uh, basically using tools or designing, trying to design a tool for to perform what I said before, the, the, the consumer feedback analysis uh, with the text analytics, uh, uh, um, um, also all the sentiment analysis. Then we said, we discovered some systems in the market, uh, benchmark some system in the market. Uh, uh, actually, there were not so many at the time. Uh, and we discovered wonderful. So, and that is like a, a big bag of chocolates. You pick one, then you pick two, and then you keep on eating chocolate until you... <laughs> until the profit margins are really fat. <laughs> it's a nightmare, nightmare <laughs> for your diet. No, but anyway, it, it, it is really like that because the amount of, of information that you can get from those systems is massive. The, the, the possibility to combine, to correlate uh, factors with others and perform analysis from many different perspectives uh, is really impressive. The other thing is that it fits the need of different stakeholders in the organization because marketing have different needs uh, from the one that R&D has or quality or customer care. So we can be maybe more interested in what are the, you know, the, the customer satisfaction, uh, relation services, et cetera. Whereas quality can be interested in what are the weak points uh, of our products. Uh, whereas marketing can be interested in understanding uh, whether the marketing message, message is well perceived, uh, whether product features uh, are uh, evaluated positively or not. So each stakeholder get the proper reply to the question. And that I, 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 I found uh, really impressive. Really yeah, impressive. I think what, what you've mentioned there is, is that the drive that, that we've seen from our end with, with the long is you're becoming more and more customer centric. And I think what you mentioned there about multiple departments, obviously you're, you're running one, one department in a huge business, but this particular 
product itself and obviously the the journey that you've been on is very much about bringing the whole organization together and everybody dipping into those different pieces of information so what was it a challenge when you decided to make the company more customer centric um and, and and what were those challenges that you had well well the challenge uh, okay the the challenge is not about to be more customer centric uh, and actually i i find the definition of customer centric a bit obsolete we are more uh, uh, for customer engagement so working besides our consumers we are not looking at consumers uh, per se they are like uh, observing the god now, that's not the case they are they are our peers we are sitting together we are doing business together we are understanding their needs uh, in their actual essence it's not like try to figure out what they think you know so and uh, uh, the challenge is uh, to disrupt all the well-established processes uh, that are present in the companies uh, and reshape the way of work reshape the organization in order to be actually uh, engaging with consumers, engaging with customer or uh, consumer-centric, if you like, whatever, in a real manner, not just in theory. Because if you keep your organization the same, if you keep your the same processes, it won't work. Okay, it's a... Uh, uh, it's really, I think everybody understands how important it is to engage with consumer, engage properly, or the what it means a consumer centric organization. Uh, but then uh, the the it, 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 it works only if you implement uh, a new organization, new processes. Uh, actually, your way of work have to change. You cannot maintain the same. Uh, for instance, uh, MPD process, new product development process, uh, if you are not sure that you consider your customers' input at the very beginning of this process, you cannot initiate a new marketing program if you, if you don't consider actually and properly and with the right level of details, what was the consumer feedback of your previous campaign or what are, cons what are consumers trends nowadays uh, so it's the different is uh, mm, let's say and i'm not speaking for the delonghi group now on so many companies there are many good companies out there many good companies uh, with plenty of, prof of professional that we can say as a, as a group of people say we know how to do the work but we need to learn the new way of doing the work okay and this is a transformation it takes time uh, takes it really requires a change of mindset yeah how, how would you say your working styles changed over the years well over i, I mean I, I love to change all the time consistently consistently because uh, and this is also one thing that i ask uh, to uh, everybody i interview for uh, offering when offering a job you know say so don't think that the, when you when you do something when you when you are trained or have the experience of doing something for a long period of time, huh? don't think that it is the best way to do. There's always the best way to do things every day. There is innovation. There are smart people thinking about smart solution, innovative solution uh, that uh, are a breakthrough in uh, a way of work or, or in the industry or in the products. Uh, so it's, it's really important, uh, <laughs> let me say, to some extent, to be humble, you know, you know? Let's say, okay, I'm a professional, but out there there is someone that is more professional than me and can teach me something. And my objective is to listen and to learn and implement. Uh, and that this is a consistent growing path. Yeah, there's a, there's a saying in the UK that if you stand still, you're actually moving backwards. And I think yeah, that, sure, sure. Yeah, I think that, that very much sums up what, what your thoughts are there. Um, well, the problem uh, in the logging group uh, that often we we move too fast and then uh, we, we need a new pair of brakes. 
but <laughs> <laughs> moving fast and breaking things. That is the funny part of the job because yeah. uh, I think it, it's probably not that easy for some individuals or some businesses to move as fast as DeLonghi sometimes does. So what would you say the barriers are um, for companies that are trying to, to catch up and, and improve what they're doing as a business and the decisions that they're making through those kinds of insights that, that you're getting from your consumers? That, well, that. There, there are so many. I mean, uh, because I, I know maybe it sounds too simplistic, but uh, you can say that uh, it changes everything, everything, everything. Uh, there are so much. Well, well, consumer insights uh, are uh, a co consistently a source uh, of uh, inspiration. And uh, what I love about those kind of tools is that you can spot weak signals, especially weak signals, because the, the big trend are, is, you can identify the big trend rather easily and from many different sources. But when it comes to weak signals, and those weak signals can be the innovation that you're looking for, it can be the barely the point that you didn't consider when you develop a new product, when you develop a new process. So uh, I believe, I believe uh, uh, it really changes the perspective of uh, looking the, the, the way you do business from uh, the, the organization that know how to do something to the organization that knows that very something, but first listen to the market, to consumers uh, and say, hey guys, let's do something together, something new, something beautiful, something exciting. Uh, yeah. Let's yeah. do it together. I, I guess you, you guys have had a few eureka moments over the years, haven't you, when you've been listening to the customers. Is there, I think there, there was something the last time we met that, that you mentioned about, um, one of the coffee machines that you make and, and noise and that kind of thing and, and the importance yeah. of that. Um, what, I mean, you could use that one or, or, or another one, but what would you say there's a, a particularly big eureka moments that you've had in, in the last couple of years that perhaps wouldn't have been noticed without listening to that consumer feedback? Well, this relates with what I said before. We discovered things we were not, uh, not, uh, um... I mean, that we perceived that there was something to be addressed, uh, and uh, but the Eureka was really to, to see so explicitly, vivid, say, hey, this is the point we have to address. It's so clear. Well, I thought it was that, but I didn't have the evidence. Now I have a, a crystal clear evidence. Uh, let's go for that. And as I said, the, uh, mm, uh, weak signals. Weak signals were eureka moments. We said, oh, I find you. Look, this is important. This is relevant. This is, especially, it wasn't relevant for me, but it has top relevance for the consumer. So also, re-leveling our priorities, that was just a really wow effect. You know, we thought that, I know, value, for money was a, was a big issue, for instance, or big big target. Whereas consumers are more interested in I don't know usability aspects, for instance. We we designed uh, also among new machines we have we have some that are so technologically advanced uh, that you need a bit of uh, uh, skills and understanding to exploit their maximum potential. I mean, you can use them, but be even slightly disappointed because they say, ah, I thought it was a, a rocket science, whereas I, I'm just getting a coffee. Well, actually that is rocket science. You can get a, 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 a super barista coffee, but you need a little bit of training because it's like when you drive a Ferrari, okay? You, you need to learn how to drive a sport machine. That is not a, a, a family sedan, that is a Ferrari, you know? Even, Gear shifting is, is is something new to learn. So it's that that's fine art, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So and then and that is the learning curve and improvement process. When you say, okay, 
I understand that I need to explain these things better. How do I do that? Implement something and measure, use the feedback. Okay, one point I didn't mention is the speed of the feedback. Because uh, normally to perform, uh, I don't know, uh, customer interviews uh, or customer surveys uh, or uh, reading uh, uh, qualitative feedback uh, takes a long while. If you imagine the industry in the past, uh, uh, one of the parameters that is still used, by the way, but most considered for quality improvement was the service for rate or the so-called failure rate, call as you like, right? So that means the percentage of products that were failing within the warranty period. Today, the perspective is very different. It's not that that is irrelevant, but even a, a, a only few reviews, but very accurate, collected from one of uh, the sources uh, can be the trigger for a quality improvement. So it's not more statistical based, it's rather on the, the probability of happening. And this is really important because uh, this allows the companies to, to react much faster than in the past. But to, to be able to do so and address your effort precisely, you need to have this kind of uh, uh, data and this level of accuracy. Massimo, when, when you bring out a new product, if we looked at like the old world before doing this kind of data analysis, how long would it have taken you to collect that kind of feedback, sending out um, review forms or questionnaires to customers comparative to what you can do today? Well, let, let, let me tell you, uh, I, I will, I will uh, reply uh, my way to your question, okay? In our MPD process, uh, now we have a new one because thanks to, to the uh, a better management of, uh, of the voice of the customer, uh, we, we redefine uh, the, the complete uh, uh, checkpoint that now is the gate system of, of our new product development process. But in the past, we had uh, the standard checkpoint, let me say, and we have from uh, normally from CP6 that was uh, uh, go to market to uh, product review the CP7 one year more or less. So lately we perform uh, well what we called in the company jargon uh, CP6.5 uh, because we performed that. <laughs> <laughs> we were we, we were not waiting one year to get the feedback when we launched new products. But I remember recently. Uh, mm, kitchen machine, coffee machine, important product, connected product. Uh, we started to review the data days after the launch. Wow. Consolidated the first data weeks after the launch. Have the first product review one month, two months after the launch. So the, you know, also it's huge. It's, it, it, it's a huge difference. It's a huge difference. And as I said, the, what is important is that we, when you don't start to approach that from the statistical viewpoint, that they say, okay, let me wait to have, uh, I don't know, 600 uh, or oh, 6,000 feedback uh, before doing anything. No, I get three, four feedback, say, hey, look this uh, feature, it doesn't work. And they say, okay, let's perform an analysis of the quality and R&D team and say, what is the likelihood of this event in, in, in our product. So, and there you say, okay, non, non existent or uh, m m uh, misuse, or yeah, it can happen and you can react immediately. Imagine also the cost benefit, because if you have an issue with your product, you can rectify it and save months, if not a year. And that must be worth huge sums of money in, in, in research and development. And, but most importantly, sales, if, if you've got a, a minor issue, perhaps even a training issue, like perhaps people can't find a feature on the, on the machine and then you can identify that straight away, contact those customers, you're going to yeah. have huge impact, aren't you? Absolutely. And also consider that the feedback are unprompted. So because the consumer voluntarily leave their reviews uh, on the websites. Uh, so uh, that is, I, in my opinion, is, is uh, a, maybe, I, uh, well, the other thing is that you need to understand how to read the reviews, okay? It's not a, a transparent. Not that simple, is it? <laughs> uh, any, anyway, what, what you get, uh, scratching something from the surface. Uh, anyway, it's, it, it's a good feedback anyway. So, uh, 
whenever you perform uh, um, like a customer survey, that's normally biased. Uh, depends the agency, depends the type of consumer selected. Uh, uh, so their result is normally a reliable, but biased. Whereas those are unbiased feedback, unprompted feedback, and fast feedback. So I think the, there is a gr great value with those. That's amazing. What, um, this is probably another fairly big question, but what's your vision of the future um, of your, yourself and other companies using consumer feedback? What do you think like the, the sort of ideal things that would happen going forward would be? Uh, well, I'm, um, there's a bit of uh, discomfort uh, in my reply because uh, uh, we, are, we are not graduated now. We are uh, really uh, almost toddlers uh, of the digital world, you know, and uh, so a, lot of, a lot of people uh, speak about AI. Only very few have the understanding of the complexity that is behind. And uh, one example, uh, companies do a lot of saying about uh, artificial intelligence and chatbot. Uh, then I, I, I can list uh, among my friends, uh, uh, a, a, a large group of them who have a miserable experience with the chatbots, all right? That means that the chatbot system uh, uh, maybe is backed up by a very poor AI, feature. We are learning how to develop those. We are implementing as, I mean, the, as a community, uh, in uh, business community, the infrastructure, because you need a certain level of databases, the IT infrastructure, data orchestrator, data lakes. So those kind of things. I mean, a lot of people give them for granted that they do exist in, in many, maybe in financial area, they are more present than in the business we are in like the small domestic appliances uh, but the infrastructure is complex okay now also uh, if you consider the transitions uh, uh, the transition uh, recently uh, the retailer scenario has changed it's not only about going uh, more more uh, uh, companies going online uh, but uh, Everything that goes along with that is the direct sales means direct contact with consumers or a different way of, of dealing with consumers that have a relation with a retailer. So you need to uh, <laughs> redesign this spider net, all these uh, connected lines uh, and dynamics have changed. Uh, and therefore, uh, and therefore, analyzing the feedback is very important. Because whenever something is so complex, uh, you need a powerful tool to simplify the everything, to get the few actionable feedback uh, to uh, address and, and uh, implement uh, actions accordingly, uh, improvement actions accordingly. Otherwise, uh, it can get lost uh, in digesting uh, information, try to process, uh, speculating over ideas, uh, and those are not leading to maybe to the right choice. So it, I, I'm saying that that's why I'm saying that the question you asked me before uh, about the, the approach to, to big data and everything. Well, if, if you don't have a strategy, if you are not already in big data processing, I mean, you better hurry up. Yeah. And I think there's, there's, there's probably lots of companies out there that are a little bit behind with that. And I, I think, like you say, we are very much at the early stages of artificial intelligence. And I think we are. We're doing the basics. I think a lot, lot of us are doing the basics well. Um, but like you say, understanding that information is really key to this and being able to train models and that kind of thing. So you, you're absolutely right. I think there's there's still a lot more to be done. And I think when you can make sense of all this, it's, it, it does drive decisions like um, at, at another level. But yeah, there's, there's probably a lot of companies that still have some catching up to do, but fortunately for, for DeLonghi, you guys are, are kind of head of the head of the curve currently. Um, well, uh, well, I hope so. And uh, well, for instance, we were, uh, uh, I don't know if the first, but among the first, uh, certainly with the tool uh, to combine uh, uh, rating and reviews, uh, also with CRM uh, mm. information. 
Yeah, uh, joining those data sets together has been incredibly powerful for you guys, hasn't it? So bringing together that siloed information from marketing, custom reviews, customer contact center, and looking at that holistically across the whole business and then getting feedback from perhaps product reviews that go into the other parts of the business and then pulling information from your customer service center that perhaps even goes into marketing is is quite new in itself, isn't it? Yeah. As well, as yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm amazed by the by the amount of information, by the quality of the information, by the ability to perform uh, also comparisons uh, of our products, competitor products. Uh, it's uh, actually <laughs> we do the same that the consumer uh, consumers do when they want to buy something. You know, they start comparing, etc. So, uh, but then uh, when you when you imagine that we have a product portfolio with maybe uh, four thousand five hundred uh, live SKUs, <laughs> start sorting yeah. out. You, you need a bit of help to do that. I, 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 definitely, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Or a huge <laughs> team of people. So yeah, it's either an AI system or about eight thousand people in a call center. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Massive. Yeah. But, yeah. Sorry, go. Uh, no, no, I wanted to say it because you just said that. Uh, a very important thing uh, about the people uh, you can you can use less resources you will use less resources but you need some dedicated resources uh, maybe also with a different uh, education than the standard one so people using this kind of thing they need to understand data they need to understand statistics uh, they need to understand uh, also i don't know semantic uh, uh, natural language pro, uh, pro, uh, processing uh, so it's mm. uh, well, it's it's actually still relatively new in yeah. our industry, at least. Yeah, Massimo, thank you so much. Um, as ever, you've been incredibly insightful. I'm, I'm sure people watching this are, are, will have found that incredibly interesting. Um, you are absolutely a trailblazer in in this area of artificial intelligence from a practical application point of view. Um, I think we're, we're lucky to have you as a customer as well. Um, but thank you very very much for your time today. Yeah, very welcome, very welcome. And I look forward for a long lasting and, and fruitful uh, cooperation with Wonderflow. So yeah, we do too. Thank and you so much. Thank you.